Hi, my name is Jacqueline Benson, and I am an assistant professor in human development and family science and a state specialist in gerontology for human environmental sciences extension at the University of Missouri. For today's lesson in our Gerontology 101 series of webinars, I will be discussing how our human relationships are connected to healthy aging. When we talk about successful aging, we typically think of health. And when we think about health, we tend to focus on two broad areas, biological and psychological. Biological health has to do with our physiological pathology. Examples include our physical health, disability, genetic vulnerabilities, immune function, stress reactivity, and medication effects. Psychological health has to do with our thoughts, emotions, attitudes, and some behaviors associated with those. Examples include learning and memory, fear and avoidance beliefs, personality, coping skills, and psychological distress. Although we may tend to think about successful aging along these lines, distinguishing successful aging as mostly a physical or mental aspect of our being is incomplete. A third and critical component of successful aging has to do with our social life and well being. Examples of social health include social supports, family background, cultural traditions, socioeconomic status, neighborhood conditions, and education. Together, these three components of health make up the biopsychosocial model of health. Although all three aspects of health are important for successful aging, this presentation will focus on providing listeners with greater understanding about the social determinants of health, and more specifically, the importance of human relationships to healthy aging. According to the United States Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, social determinants of health include the economic and social conditions that influence the health of people and communities. These conditions affect a wide range of health risks and outcomes. A plethora of research studies have demonstrated health outcomes vary significantly in communities with poor social determinants of health, such as unstable housing, low income, unsafe neighborhoods, limited access to medical care, or substandard education. For example, we know that poverty limits access to good nutrition and safe communities. We also know that more education is a strong predictor of better health. Although it is difficult to state that any one social determinant of health is more meaningful than another, it is impossible to deny the critical influence of social support in determining healthy aging. How happy we are in our relationships with family, friends, and neighbors shape our health and our ability to age successfully in powerful ways. In fact, according to data from the Harvard Study of Adult Development, which is one of the longest, most comprehensive studies of aging ever conducted, maintaining strong social relationships was found to be a better predictor of happy and healthy longevity than several other social determinants, including income status and education. When it comes to understanding social relationships and the ways that influence healthy aging, social scientists have studied several distinct features of social connection offered by relationships. These include social support, social engagement, social isolation, and loneliness. Social support is assistance, both instrumental and emotional, given to an older adult by members of their social network. These members include intimate partners and spouses, children and grandchildren, friends and neighbors. Social support matters for healthy aging because it is associated with better ability to complete daily living activities. Maintaining the ability to complete daily living activities is especially important because an inability to complete such activities constitutes a shift from the normal cognitive decline associated with aging to the more detrimental functional decline associated with dementia. 
Social engagement involves meaningful interaction with others. Social support and social engagement are associated because social support is one of the pathways that links social engagement to individual well being. Interventions that promote active social engagement in older adults are associated with improved self esteem, lower blood pressure, better memory function, and decreased levels of depression. When older adults have greater participation in meaningful social interactions, they experience overall increased psychological well being. The flip side of the coin to social engagement is social isolation, which involves a lack of interaction and communication with others. According to a recent survey by the AARP Foundation, more than 8 million adults age 50 and older are isolated. Social isolation in older adults is just as deadly as smoking and obesity. In fact, the health risks of prolonged social isolation are equivalent to smoking 15 cigarettes a day. This is even more salient for ethnic and racial minorities, especially older adults in poverty or in very poor health. A distinct but related concept to social isolation and social engagement is loneliness. Loneliness refers to the feeling or perception of being isolated and the belief that others cannot be trusted. Loneliness matters greatly in terms of healthy aging because it can lead to less physical activity, increased blood pressure, participation in harmful health behaviors such as smoking, excessive alcohol consumption or overeating, decreased cognitive performance, increased depressive symptoms, and increased persistence of depression. Although positive social support and social engagement can help prevent loneliness, loneliness can still occur in individuals with active social lives and ample support. And although being socially isolated is a risk factor for loneliness, older adults who live alone or spend ample time alone are not necessarily lonely. Still, about 20 to 43% of adults ages 60 and older experience frequent or intense loneliness. Although understanding how and why our social lives matter for healthy aging is important, knowing what actions we can take to help improve the quality of older adults' social connections is arguably even more important. What can we do as community educators to be part of the solution to successful aging? First, we can increase awareness about the ways our social relationships influence health. Spread the word by educating other healthcare providers and aging services professionals. Tell your own friends and family and get involved in local and community initiatives. Broaden your reach by including technology to deliver your message. Social media is an excellent platform. Second, prioritize your own community engagement and collaborate for impact. Work diligently toward becoming an expert about your community so that you are aware of the local resources, agencies, and interventionists that are available to support older adults in combating loneliness and social isolation. This effort will also help broaden your impact by helping you forge new professional partnerships. These partnerships can help you in your efforts to connect older adults to resources beyond the local level, as well as resources that are available online. In terms of evidence-based programming, overall, evidence of effective interventions is limited. However, group-based activities and support that provide opportunities for social interaction appear to show the most promise in addressing isolation and loneliness for older adults. For example, group activities such as reading to children in schools or art, writing, and exercise sessions have been found to produce improvements in overall health. Long-term effectiveness may be improved by providing activities that enhance self-esteem and personal control. For example, skills training and involving older people in the planning, developing, and delivery of activities. Support groups and discussion sessions have also proven beneficial for specific populations. For example, people who were bereaved or had a chronic condition. 
Finally, some one-on-one -on -one interventions and technology-assisted interventions have been found to improve social support and activity. For example, individual counseling can help improve feelings of well-being. However, it has yet to demonstrate effectiveness in improving social networks or social support. Computer training, telephone-based interventions, and internet use programs have shown limited evidence for reducing loneliness in older people. Although telephone crisis support lines for older people at risk of suicide have been shown to decrease social isolation and depression. Successful implementation may depend on the ability to identify people who are who, who, or who are at risk of being socially isolated or lonely. Partnering with health systems is suggested as general practitioners may be more aware of their patients' personal circumstances and thus may be well positioned to identify socially isolated people. Developing strong partnership arrangements with voluntary agencies is also shown to matter greatly in terms of ensuring that interventions are sustained. Matching interventions to the needs, attitudes, and preferences of recipients it's also important for successful recruitment and ensuring participation. Flexibility and choice seem to be key attributes in developing effective and appropriate interventions. And given that group-based activities appear to be the most successful interventions for reducing loneliness and social isolation, consideration also needs to be given to the provision of transport to venues so that people are able to engage in group or community sessions. When we have close, healthy relationships, we are better able to endure stressful life events, such as experiencing the death of a spouse or diagnosis of a chronic illness. Receiving positive social support, actively engaging in social activities, and having robust social networks can slow cognitive and physical decline. Taken together, the current science on social support, social engagement, social isolation and loneliness provide strong evidence that human relationships are the key to living a long, healthy, and happy life. Although taking care of our physical bodies is important, having strong social connections with family, friends, and community members can matter more for our well-being than maintaining a healthy diet, exercise, or even smoking. For those seeking a long and healthy life, it's not enough to focus on biological and psychological health. We simply cannot forget to connect. <laughs>